Hello everybody and welcome to Holiday Science. Today we are going to make reindeer toothpaste. So all you need for reindeer toothpaste, you need a very inexpensive aluminum pan, preferably one with a high lip. I have one with a lower lip, that's perfectly fine. Even a paper plate or a foam plate would, would work just as well. You need some dishwashing liquid, some 3% hydrogen peroxide, some funnels, food coloring, three tablespoons of water, and a packet of yeast per student. Today, because it is a holiday science and we are making reindeer toothpaste, what I have found, very inexpensively, um, holiday bulbs that we're gonna use in, in lieu of an Erlenmeyer flask. And what I have done to balance them out because they are completely round and they don't have a flat bottom, I just found, again, some really inexpensive plastic cups and we use that to balance our holiday bulb. Okay, so the real experiment is actually gonna come out of the holiday bulb. You wanna find something that has a really narrow neck. That makes the experiment so much better and you'll see in just a little bit what I mean by that. You'll also need, again, you'll need the three tablespoons of water. It's always best if you go ahead and just have everything ready for your students when they come to the classroom for the lab and explain everything, kind of walk through the steps with them so they have an idea in the back of their mind. You can also show them a YouTube video so they have that knowledge of what to expect that their experiment may do. May, you may not want to show them all the way to the end because that's the most exciting point, but at least give them an idea of the steps that they're going to take and get them familiar with the, um, with the equipment and any kind of chemicals that they may use. So the chemical today is going to be the hydrogen peroxide. I have your basic 3% hydrogen peroxide that you can find at any drugstore. They have all the materials that they need in front of them. I even have the three tablespoons of water already prepared for them because that can take a little bit of time. If you have anywhere between 20 and 30 students shoveling out three tablespoons of water per student while they're waiting for this experiment to happen, they're gonna probably get a little bit restless. So it's always best to have as much already prepared as possible. Okay, so you can have them work in teams. You can have just one set for a whole table and have them take turns. A little bit of materials can go a long way with this experiment. And so they can rotate. But today we have Jalen and Jada, fifth grade and sixth grade, and they're gonna hear, they are here today to help me out with this experiment. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm going to take, just to show them, and as a teacher, it's always best that you do this as well. You wanna make sure you have total control of the hydrogen peroxide. So I have a funnel, and I'm gonna place it in the neck of the holiday bulb, and I'm gonna put about a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide in the bulb. The next thing they're gonna do, and beforehand, I've already kind of given them an, an outline of what this experiment has looked like. So I have availability of some food coloring and make sure it's a liquid and not the gel kind. Um, the liquid is gonna, is gonna work. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab, go ahead and grab one color. You can go ahead and pick up the cup, right? Or pick up the bulb. And you're going to tilt the bulb just a little bit and you want the food coloring to go down the side of the bulb, and you want to put maybe five drops of food coloring and so it goes down the side of the bulb. Okay, go ahead. You want help? So if they need a little bit of guidance, that's okay. You're there as a teacher, you're there as a facilitator to help them out, and they just want to pour it down the side. And if you'll go ahead and pop the top on the other one for me. Oh, okay. And you're gonna just gently rotate it in your hand you're gonna take the other side and you're gonna pour it down the side. And you're gonna watch that happen. Then you're gonna gently put it back into its stand. So we're gonna let that kinda of simmer there for a second. So the next thing we're gonna do is we have our three tablespoons of warm water. If you don't have access to a microwave, that's perfectly fine, as long as it has a little bit of heat to it. So if you wanna turn on your tap water, put it on hot, let it run for a little bit so it gets as hot as it can. Measure out your three tablespoons. You wanna take your yeast, cut the corner off, make sure your students have the availability of a spoon, because right when you start to, 
dump the yeast into the cup, you want them to immediately start stirring. So I'm going to go ahead and hand you the spoon. I'm going to dump this in there and go ahead and start stirring. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for you. So what they're doing is they're stirring in the yeast as fast as they can. Keep, and what that's doing is that's creating heat as well. You want to instruct them also, they don't want to see chunks of yeast, dry yeast, part of the pack that fell in there. You want to make sure they get it as wet as possible. And then what they're going to do is they're going to take the yeast in the cup. So go ahead and drop down, drop your spoons, drop your spoons. Go ahead and put them to your side. You want to go around and make sure your yeast doesn't come out in clumps. So if you want to add a little bit more water, that's fine. And have your students stir it a little bit more. When they're done, you're going to instruct them to put their spoon to the side of them. So are you good? No more clumps? If you have a clump, you can go ahead and scoop it out. If you find that they have clumps inside their water, they can scoop it out with a spoon and lay it to the side. Okay. So then what they're going to do, go ahead and take your spoon and lay it to the side. And this is where the magic happens. So you're going to take your yeast and water and you're going to pour it in the bulb. Make sure your bulb is in the center of your aluminum pan and you're going to drop the yeast in and you're going to step back and you're going to watch and see what happens. And you're going to make reindeer toothpaste. Ta-da! <laughs> so the students didn't use any dishwashing liquid with theirs, and that's perfectly fine. That's another way to show the differentiation on, in the experiment. So now I'm going to show you what it can look like with, with the use of dishwashing liquid. So here I am, and I'm going to pour a little bit, about a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide, into my bulb. Okay, and lay that to the side. I'm going to put it back into my holder. All right, I'm going to add about three to five drops of Dawn right down the middle. Okay, I'm going to add some, a little bit of food coloring. Three or four drops. And we'll do this. And they can use between one color, two, three, four. It doesn't matter, it's okay. So as you can see, I'm gonna let that rest to the side. I'm gonna take my yeast packet. I'm gonna cut it to the side. I'm gonna dump the yeast into the water. If I can use your spoon. Add a little bit of water, a little bit more water. Oops, that's okay. I'm going to take my spoon and I'm going to stir it as fast as I can, get that yeast in there all mixed up. While this has been kind of settling over to the side, and I'm going to slowly pour the yeast into my bulb and see what happens. Reindeer toothpaste. So as you can see today, we only use 3% hydrogen peroxide. You can use 10 all the way to 20. That can be extremely hot to the touch, but the higher the percentage of the hydrogen peroxide that you use, the higher the actual explosion is going to be. If you use all the way up to 20 and even 30% hydrogen peroxide, it would have reached the ceiling today. But because we have a little bit younger of students today, we're going to settle, especially within the classroom, you're just going to use the 3% hydrogen peroxide. And as you can see the difference, with the use of the liquid detergent, you have a little bit more foam. And without the use of that, you don't have as much foam. And maybe you can mix that up within your classroom. Maybe you can have half the class with dishwashing liquid and the other half without. Thank you for joining us today.